Welcome to the seventh day of our Bible reading. The last time we read from chapter 25, Genesis chapter 25 to chapter 30. And today we are reading from chapter 31 to chapter 36. Chapter 35. Chapter 31. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what was our father's, he has acquired all, all this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not favorable towards me as before. But the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my might I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God did, it, did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. And if he said thus, the stripped shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore stripped. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were stripped, speckled, and gray spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap on the flocks are stripped, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not considered strangers by him? For he has sold us, and also completely consumed our money. For all these riches which God has taken from our father, are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. Then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wife and his wives on camels, and he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions which he had gained, his acquired livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram, to go to his father, to go his, to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to share his sheep. And Rachel had stolen the household idols that were our fathers. And Jacob stole away, unknown to Laban the Syrian, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. He arose and crossed the river and headed toward the mountains of Gilead. And Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. Then he took his brethren with him and pursued him for seven days. For seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead. But God had come to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night, and said to him, Be careful that he speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. So Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mountains of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have stolen away my that you have stolen away unknown to me and carried away my daughters like captives taken with the sword. Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me and not tell me? For I might have sent you away with joy and songs, with timbrel and app, and you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night saying, Be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. And now you have surely gone, because you greatly long for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Then Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, Perhaps you would take your daughters from me by force. With whomever you find your gods, do not let him live. In the presence of our brethren, identify what I have of yours and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel 
that Rachel had stolen them. And Levan went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two maids' tent, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken their household idols, put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. And Levan searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let us not deplease my lord that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of women is with me. And he searched, but did not find the eyes household idols. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin? That you have so utterly pursued me. Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household sins have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge between us both. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, have not miscarried their young, and I have not eaten the rams of your flock. That which was torn by beast I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You require it from my hand. Whether stolen by day or stolen by night, there I was in the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus I have been in your house twenty years. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac has been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine, but what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have born? Now therefore, come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, Gather stones, and they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there on the heap. Laban called it Jegasad Duta, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore, its name was called Galid, also Mizpah, because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from another. If you afflict my, if you afflict my daughters, if you, or if you take other wives, <laughs> or if you take other wives beside my daughters, although no man is with us, see. God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, Here is the heap, and here is the pillar, which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar, which I have placed between you and me. The heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not pass by beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me, for I am the God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father, judge between us. And Jacob saw by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread and stayed all night on the mountain. And early in the morning, Laban arose and kissed his sons and daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Chapter 32 Esau comes to meet Jacob. So Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Maanai. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the, king, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau, thus your servant. Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks and male and female servants and i have sent to my to tell my lord that i may find favor in your sight then the messengers returned to jacob saying we came to your brother we came to your brother esau and he also is coming to meet you and 400 men are with him so jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies and he said if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, 
then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the messes and of, and of all the truths which you have shown your servants. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and, I, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother is the children. For he said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So he lodged there that same night and took what came to his hand as a present from for Esau his brother. 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milk camels with their coats, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 foals. Then he delivered them to the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, Pass over before me and put some distance between successive droves. And commanded the first one, saying, when Esau, my brother, meets you and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong and where are you going? Whose are these in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my lord Esau. And behold, he also is behind us. So he commanded the second, the third, and all who followed the droves, saying, In this manner you shall speak to Esau when you find him. And also say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us, for he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present went on bef over before him, but he himself lodged that night in the camp. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled, as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What's your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because it touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle, in the muscle that shrank. Now, chapter 3. Now Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maidservants, and he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes, and saw the women and the children, and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given to your servant. Then the maid servants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah, and Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel, <laughs> Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. 
keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please, if I have now found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand, inasmuch as I have seen your face, as though I had seen the face of God. And you were pleased with me. Please take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us take our journey. Let us go, and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them out one day, all the flock will die. Please let my Lord go on ahead before his servants. I will lead on slowly at a pace which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord and say, And Esau said, Now let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir, and Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, built himself a house, and made boots for his livestock. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkot. Then Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padan Aram, and he pitched his tent before the city, and he bought the parcel of land where he had pitched his tent from the, ch from the children of Amor. Shechem's father, for one hundred pieces of money. Then he erected an altar there and called it El Eloi Israel. Chapter 34. Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Amor, the Ivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father Amor, saying, Get me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Amor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob. To speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from a field when they heard it, and the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Amos spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs, <laughs> longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. To make marriages with us, give your daughters to us, and take our daughters to yourself. So you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to his, to our father and our brother, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me, I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gifts, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Amor his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defied Dinah, their sister. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition we will consent to you. If you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not eat us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Amor and Shechem, Amor's son. So the... <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? Because these guys are about to die. And their words pleased Amor and Shechem, 
Amos' son. So the young man did not delay. <laughs> So the young man did not delay to do the thing because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Amma and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men. And spoke with the men of their city, saying, "These men are at peace with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in it." For indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take, take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to do with us to be one people. If every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of his city, he did armor. And Shechem his son. Every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gates of his city. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brother, as each took his sword and came boldly. <laughs> this is These guys don't have forgiving spirits. Each took his sword. <laughs> and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Amor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took dinner from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field, all, and all their wealth, all their little ones and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the house. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves against me. They will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, should we treat our sister like a harlot? Chapter 35 Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourself and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and had been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob eat them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them. And they did not pursue the, the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died. And she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alon Bashut. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac 
I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they were, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said to her, Ruah, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel joined and pitched, at, and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Ada. And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilah, his father's countryman, and Israel heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservants, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Silpah, Leah's maidservants, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kijat Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. So Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons, Esau and Jacob, buried him. Now we've come to the end of today's reading. May God bless his word. Thanks for listening. And God bless you. Make sure to subscribe to see you next episode. Subscribe, turn on your notification to see next episode when it comes out. God bless you. Bye.